Welcome to JavaScript webinar from jpassion.com. Uh, today's topic is prototype JavaScript library. And the rest of the week, we are going to spend some time learning Dojo. So we have uh, five or six topics on Dojo. So let's move on to the presentation of prototype. Uh, you can, people cannot hear me? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, my apology. Okay, so you should be able to hear. I was actually mute, uh, muting it. Can you hear me okay now? Sorry about that. All right. Okay, so uh, prototype JavaScript library. So these are the topics that we are going to cover. A prototype a JavaScript library introduction, utility functions, and form and element classes, and uh, some extension functions, and the Ajax uh, support. So prototype JavaScript library uh, is written by Sam uh, Stevenson, uh, Stevenson, and uh, is actually basically captured in a single file called the prototype.js file, and you can get it from uh, prototype.js.org file org website. Uh, basically, it has a lot of utility uh, JavaScript functions, uh, including Ajax support. So we can actually take a look at some of those. So let's see utility functions. So dollar and the parenthesis function. Uh, so it's basically the same thing as document dot get element by ID, and uh, you can specify the name of the ID with just a dollar sign. So it's a little bit short, uh, shorter than get element by ID. So less typing, and that's a good thing. You can also specify multiple IDs uh, as an argument here, and then it will generate an array. So in this case, once you got the array object, and then you can uh, iterate using for loop. F function is used to get a value of an input form field element. Okay? So for example, suppose I have an input element whose ID happened to be username, and then basically I can use F function username, and basically I get the value in this case, the value is going to be Joe Doe. Okay. So it is the same thing as element.value. It works with on any input field. So examples include text and checkbox and things like that. A function converts node list object into array object. So here, if you call get element by tag name, and uh, then it will return node list object. And uh, if you're using a function, then it will generate an array object. And then you can um, uh, play with play. Uh, you can use it as an array object. In this case, using for example each. H function uh, converts object to a hash object and once you convert it into a hash object then you can leverage some utility methods that come with that hash object. For example, this is uh, the JavaScript object and uh, then we are converting into hash object and then you can call uh, to query string method of that hash object so it will generate for example, like this. So, you know, hash object provides some extra utility method that you can use. Our function is a shorthand to writing new object range. So, basically, instead of using object range of this format, you can just use uh, our function. So, in this case, uh, if I say all, and this is the uh, lower bound, this is upper bound, and when you say false, that means don't exclude the upper bound. So in this case, the range will be 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 because you don't exclude the upper bound. If it's set to true, then you are going to exclude this upper bound value. So it's going to be from 10, 11, 12, 13, and just 14. Okay. And uh, so once you got the uh, 
range object here, then you can just call as um, the methods. Okay, so let's do our first exercise. So contributability functions, because this is a dollar, so let me just open the HTML editor. So here we have uh, my div and my other div. Okay, so test one is getting my div object, and we are just displaying in you know, a HTML text value of my div. And here uh, we actually uh, get the array object of my div and my other div, and then we are just displaying it. Basically, we are loading it. So let's just run this code. So if I click test one, it will just display the contents of the first paragraph. And if I click this two, then it will display the first paragraph, paragraph and the second par paragraph because that's an array. Pretty straightforward. Now uh, let's try A. So here we are creating array object from node list object. Okay. And uh, then once you got the uh, array object, uh, we are just displaying inner HTML value. So here, uh, basically, we are uh, we got the uh, first uh, first employees and select options so basically you know the uh, we are getting these three as an array okay. okay so let's just run this code ah, so basically we are using uh, the uh, console log so you can see you know, these are the array object that we, ju we are just displaying it. Relatively straightforward. And this is f function. So this is getting a value of uh, username uh, input element. So in this case, we have uh, uh, username. This is a John Doe. Okay? So we are going to just display the value. In this case, John Doe. So let's just run this code. As expected, yeah, it just displays on the. If you change this value because this is input value, you, know, you can change it, and then you can test it. Then it should display whatever you typed in. Okay. Um, what is node list versus array? So node list is ordered list so it does have an index uh, as one of the uh, you know the properties h is creating a hash from your javascript object so here now you can take advantage of hash uh, object uh, method so in this case to query string okay so we should display this so let's run this code and I just display these things. So I'm actually showing only a subset of uh, the, uh, the uh, prototype utility functions. Okay, So, uh, you know, basically uh, prototype is a collection of utility functions and other JavaScript library, in fact, uses prototype uh, underneath because uh, it provides a decent set of uh, utility functions like this. And here is a range. So here it is from 10 to 15. And uh, then we just console. And uh, this is the case. Uh, it is checking whether 10 is included or not. So it is true. And you can also use a join. You can use a join method. So it will return like this. Okay. And this one is again uh, the uh, from A8 to AH. Uh, and then we are creating a, so it's basically range from AA to AH. So basically we are talking about this. And then we are using with join method. This one, uh, because we set it true, meaning exclude this upper bound, so it should actually return false. Okay. All right, so let's try to run this code. and it work as is expected. Okay, uh, and try this. Uh, 
yeah try this is basically you know try all these functions until it worked okay so in this case the function this one is returning error so this is not gonna take it's not gonna be taken now this one returns uh, number two which is valid return so it will just take this one okay so it's basically try this is try all these functions until uh, you know it finds a function that worked okay so if I just run this code again it will be turned to okay value return to okay now let's move on to the next form and element classes so basically you can call get elements and form and return all elements of the form as an array okay. and uh, get inputs returns all input elements from a form filtering out the results by element type or element name okay so you know basically it's used as a filter Disable form gets every element of the form, fires the blur event, and sets the disabled attribute to true for every element. Basically, you disable uh, all the elements. That's what it's doing. So let's actually take a look at that. So this is, in fact, the uh, uh, prototype website. In fact, you can try all this. Okay? So again, we're actually taking a look at only a subset of it. So if I just you know toggle disable I'm actually disabling it I'm basically calling this method okay disable form and uh, oops you can see it's disabled now if I toggle it again then it's enabled okay all right so let's see Uh, enable is the opposite of that. Focus first element. So basically, you are having the first non-hidden, non-disabled form field to be focused. Reset is resetting all the input fields of a form. Serialize formats a string for posting for the form to the server via Ajax in the form of element name set to value one, element name to value two, and things like that. So it's basically for creation of this uh, the uh, parameter set okay uh, elements class uh, CSS style so you can add a CSS a class to an element uh, you can get the uh, old uh, the classes uh, CSS style classes on an element you can set the style uh, with passing the property hash of the CSS properties and you can also get the style based on this, you know, basically value of that this particular uh, CSS property. And uh, you can also hide, show, toggle, and scroll to. Scroll to scrolls the window to the element position. Okay. Uh, remove an element and update an element. Moving forward, extension functions. So it does provide class.create function, and uh, it is used for creating uh, class, uh, basically simulating uh, class, uh, the uh, scheme of class-based language like a Java. Okay. So for example, uh, you can call class.create and then you can also actually have this initialize uh, method as a constructor when this object gets created, okay? And uh, then you got an object, okay, of this particular, uh, you know, class. And uh, so here, uh, you can actually create an object by using new, and then you can pass initialization value, and the initialization value will be passed to this initialize method, and it will set the name. Okay, all right. So again, it's just a simulating uh, class creation. Event observe uh, is basically you can specify an element and then event name and then event handler. And basically you're associating event handler to a particular event name or event type to an element. 
So in this case, suppose I have my button somewhere, and uh, then basically I want to associate add name function as event handler when click uh, event name uh, event occurred on my button. Okay. So in this code, basically, I'm also actually adding uh, when DOM is loaded, I want to actually call this function. Inside the function, I want to actually set the event handler to my button. Okay. Uh, times is encapsulate, uh, you know, the regular to n, uh, zero to n loop, like a Ruby style. So you can actually call the number and then times, and basically, you know, try five times passing the value as n. Uh, and then perform this function. Yeah, so this is exactly like a Ruby style of uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, invocation of times. All right, so let's try extension, extension functions. Uh, okay, so my voice is kind of low. Can you hear me okay now? All right, okay, so let me just make sure. Let me just increase the volume a bit. Okay, hopefully that is better. Okay, so now we are going to go to extension functions example. So here, class object. So, uh, so we are creating again person. Um, uh, the uh, object and uh, so this person class will have uh, this is initialized initialized so this is functioning as a constructor and then it does have other method get details and get uh, you know divs and get labels and it does have show function show person uh, method okay and then I create a person object okay and then you can do whatever you want so here uh, when I click the button, it will just call show person, okay, with this. So let's try, um, let's try to run this code. So it will just display first name, last name. Okay, I think that's about it. So, you know, get details. Uh, it create the uh, uh, array object. And uh, then it create the uh, show first name, show last name, div, and uh, then labels. And basically, we are just kind of you know the uh, uh, putting this value into the first name as an inner HTML. It's relatively straightforward uh, code if you look at it. And that's class object and uh, extension uh, for element object so it's basically uh, uh, so we are observing uh, we are observing oh, okay this is just a comment yeah so this is basically I'm observing uh, the this bar whenever uh, this bar has on click event I want to call uh, this uh, method that's basically what you're talking what you're talking about I didn't actually mention this one in the presentation. Okay. So let's actually run this code. So clicked. Uh, it's basically that's what it's done. And uh, let's see, the one I mentioned is uh, extension of uh, the uh, event object, event observe. So here, uh, when DOM is loaded, call this function and inside the function we are also associating add name handler to the click event type to my button okay and uh, so you know when my button is clicked it will just go through the child elements and then it will just insert one after the other okay. right so let's run this code so you know I'm basically adding Uh, 
what is the functionality of observe? So observe is basically you are associating an event handler. So you are actually, you know, building event receiver or event observer. That's what observe is all about. Okay. So in fact, if you, uh, you know, CDI of Java E6 is in fact using observes annotation. So that is pretty much the same observed annotation to, uh, to, to behave like an event observer. The same concept. Okay. So basically setting event handler of that name function to this event type on this element. That's basically what it's doing. Okay, so this one is number class. Uh, again, you can use the names method on any uh, numeric uh, type. Okay, so you know I'm actually calling this alert uh, alert function on any you know the uh, in in the number. Okay, starting from uh, zero to, to uh, four. Okay, so let's run this code. So zero, one, one, two, three, yeah, it's one to four, one to three, three times, four times. Okay, so these are utility functions, and uh, let's move on to Ajax. So prototype support Ajax using Ajax.request. And uh, let me actually address a question from Kumar. Uh, how is the class object different from original JavaScript object? So again, this is a simulation of class object. You know, it's sort of the simulation of the class uh, behavior of the class-based class. Okay. So you know, it's, it's you know, if you think about it internally, uh, it's going to use a function, a constructor. Okay. Uh, to create uh, an object. Remember, uh, in our JavaScript, uh, the basics uh, presentation, uh, one of the ways that you are going to create a JavaScript object is using function, right? Okay, uh, function constructor. So, you know, basically it's using a class object uh, and it calls a you know create method and internally is actually providing that kind of scheme, you know, it's actually using function constructor. So you can think of class object as just utility class, utility object. Okay, moving forward, Ajax.request, it handles XML HTTP request. So uh, two weeks ago, uh, actually, um, you know, the uh, last week, uh, we cover Ajax basics, right? Okay, so here, uh, instead of using that uh, low level XML HTTP request object directly, you are going to use Ajax request and you provide the URL. This is the destination. So here I'm actually setting the destination of Ajax validation prototype slash validate. And then I'm passing Ajax option object. So Ajax option object uh, has several properties and one property is a method. So you can either set get or post and then you can specify the parameters. In this case, the parameters is this, uh, you know, this, this is the parameter I'm actually setting. And then on complete is that when things were successful, this process request method will be invoked. Okay. And uh, this is the explanation of uh, the uh, Ajax options object. Okay. So again, method could be either get or post. Parameter is you are a formatted list of values passed to the uh, request. And the post body contents passed to the request body in case of HTTP post. And again, on event is the callback function to be invoked. Okay. okay, question from Best Eboy. Can you please explain what is Maven project and what is uh, Maven script? Why all Java passion projects are in Maven? <laughs> okay, yeah, that's actually Maven question. So let me just move on. So I suggest you take a look at the uh, Maven uh, basics and Maven advanced uh, topics in Java uh, development tools course. Okay, all right. Ajax options. Uh, so on exec on, ex on on exception and function. So you basically, you know, you can. Uh, so this is a callback function when there is an error, so like invalid response or invalid arguments. 
All right, so let's do uh, validation prototype. Actually, I'm going to use the hands-on lab for that. So let's go to the hands-on lab. So what we have done in exercise one and two, I have already demonstrated that exercise one is utility functions and exercise two is the uh, extension functions like a class create. Now exercise three and four is converting Ajax validation uh, project that you have done in Ajax Basics uh, hands-on lab, which is using XML HTTP request directly, which is again very low level, to use uh, prototype Ajax request. And exercise four is doing the same thing for Ajax autocomplete project. So let's take a look at exercise three. Okay, so you know you want to open this project and run it, and it's in fact the same project that you have done in Ajax Spaces. So if you have that project already in your Eclipse, then you don't have to uh, you don't have to uh, you know open this one, but it's available as uh, a Maven project uh, in this hands-on lab as well. So here you are going to change your code. So this is the code that's using XML HTTP request directly. Okay. So as you can see, this is uh, you know the uh, very low level, okay. Uh, and uh, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna change the code to use uh, prototype Ajax request. So here, uh, URL is the same, and method you're gonna set to get, and then you actually provide the parameters object like this, okay. So action is create, ID is user ID. Okay, and that's what you want to pass as part of the parameters of URL. And then on complete, you know, you're basically calling process request. And this process request is pretty much the same. Uh, yeah, so we actually simplified it as well. So this used to be old code. Again, it's very, you know, complex using low-level DOM APIs. It's also checking XML HTTP request uh, re you know, ready state and status. So, you know, pretty, uh, again, pretty low level. So what you're going to do is changing it uh, so that uh, it's actually a bit more simpler. Uh, so here we actually, uh, okay, so this is basically uh, the, uh, the uh, 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 so request is the instance of Ajax response and we're actually getting the value of it, okay? So value is going to be either true or false, right? And uh, then we actually call it set message using DOM API, uh, which is pretty much the same that uh, you know uh, with the original code. Okay. And uh, so here uh, we are again, you know, we are not we are not using very low low level DOM APIs anymore. Okay. And you're basically using you know HTML. Okay. And uh, so here uh, also, you know. For disabling the button, uh, you can just use the disable method of uh, an element. Okay, so again, this is uh, uh, the uh, this is uh, the uh, convenience from prototype. Okay. All right, so that is uh, pretty much it. And you run the application; it should work pretty much the same. Okay, so let's try to run the code. So I provided a solution here on the solutions uh, directory. So I'm going to just try uh, Ajax validation prototype. So I'm going to build and run the application. I'm going to select Comcat. Restart the server. Okay, so while it's starting, let me, okay, so here we go. And uh, let me just, this is the console. And, uh, you know, again, then, so if you actually enable the uh, network here, you should be able to see all the messages uh, that are being, used. so this is the response, okay, this is the headers. Okay, so this is actually passing action equal create an ID equal SA. Okay, so if I say N, then we should actually say SAN. Okay. So here, if I see, yeah, so you can see SAN, the response is still true. If I say Duke, 
Okay, still valid, but as soon as I type E, then it's invalid. Okay, okay, because that is a way to take it. So the code is converted to uh, to use uh, prototype AJAX request. So if you go to, uh, of course, by the way, you have to have prototype JS file right here. Okay, and uh, so you know you have to actually include this prototype.js file and uh, here. Uh, you know, the uh, I'm using AJAX request as we have seen before. So, question from Danny Can I pass any kind of object to an AJAX request? Well, you have to actually provide this information. You have to provide URL as a first parameter, and uh, you know, then you can actually provide AJAX options object. So, here I create AJAX option object as a, in a JavaScript literal right and uh, the option object could have method parameters on complete on errors and things like that so you have to actually you know pass this object not just regular object you have to actually pass this option object okay so is on complete the same as on success correct Is there a way to capture the screen scroll position properties on postback from the server using prototype functions? Um, I don't know to tell you the truth. Let's see. All right, looks like that's pretty much all the question there is. Uh, what if you have to use any other .js file in conjunction with a prototype .js file? Uh, you can use, you know, the uh, various sets of. Uh, you can just add another one, okay? So if you want to use another, you know, library, and then all you have to do is just say, uh, you know, just like this, and you can just have, for example, like xyz.js, okay? So you can in fact use uh, multiple JavaScript library. Okay. How to open your hands on uh, lab create in NetBeans in Eclipse? Okay, so Niraj, I think what you're asking is probably you have a NetBeans project and if there is a way that you can open the NetBeans project in Eclipse, uh, the answer is uh, yes or no. If your NetBeans project is in Maven form, and then you can actually open that Maven project in any ID of your choice. If you are talking about uh, native NetBeans project, then you cannot open it in uh, Eclipse. Okay. All right. I'm going to actually.